Hey YouTube, I'm doing outstanding. Welcome back to the podcast. I have no title for it right now, so it's just the podcast. Today, I'm here with my buddy Steven. Yo. And Jordan. Hello. So, I've only got two mics, so they're sharing one. Because they're, they're good friends. Yeah, they love and we're each also other. very ghetto, so... He meant gay. Bisexual, uh, <laughs> actually. Anyway, um... So we have a couple topics for today, but the first one we want to talk about is Steven. You just got back from Japan. Yes, I did. How on was the 16th? That? It was it was great. The flying I hate the flying part, but the actual trip was great. So I went as a study abroad program kind of situation. Uh, it was a political science, which makes me the funnest guy at parties officially. Uh, we're studying peace and conflict, so it was about World War Two basically, uh, and what led up to it in Japan and uh, how Japan trans formed itself uh, with the help of uh, billions of American dollars into a democracy. Interesting. So what were the places that you went to? So we started out in Tokyo. We were there for about two weeks. And then we spent two days in uh, Kyoto and two days in uh, Hiroshima. Then we spent six days in Seoul. and came back to Tokyo after that for a few more days. And just for those who are unaware, for whatever reason, Seoul is in Korea. That's correct. Yes, I also went to South Korea because uh, there was a lot of stuff that Japan did pre and pre World War Two and during World War Two in Korea, which was at that point just one country. So, did you go to the DMZ? Yeah, we actually did go to the DMZ. Of course, on the south side, um, because you can't go to the north side, they'll shoot you. <laughs> uh, well, so. I thought the South Korea and North Korea were at peace now. No, not quite. They're working on it. Currently, with gotcha. the help of our beloved president, uh, Mr. Trump. Okay. Uh, are we cutting that, too? No, I'm just no. saying, oh, God. Just <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, we're not nuclear war yet. But uh... Well, I, I heard on the news that they're trying to make a truce. Like, they're trying to... Well, yeah, I, I heard that, like, in 2016, that they were making a truce between North and South Korea, so... Yeah, and then Trump got elected and increased tensions... Between America and yeah. South or North Korea, rather, yeah. uh, and obviously South Korea is heavily influenced by America and what its president does. Uh, so the tensions were higher for a little bit, and then also South Korea, um, their previous president got impeached and removed, hmm. and the new president, who's much more liberal than the old president, um, who was the granddaughter of the previous military dictator of South Korea. Uh, so the new, more liberal president has been working more with North Korea, trying to uh, move back towards a peace. All right. Interesting. <laughs> now, I, uh, I don't want to be a party pooper here, but yeah. I don't exactly want to talk about politics. No, absolutely. I was yeah, trying I th to I think get away people, from that. I, I, I think just, people are going to be super bored. I mean, it's... I, it's, I just wanted to talk about the DMZ because I think that's a kind of a cool thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I they have, think, it, you're a great intellectual, but I don't yeah. want to get into politics yeah. and all, all these things. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yeah. People no, are going to go to sleep from that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, as far as, like, touring around Japan, you said Pokemon Go was, like, Pokemon everywhere. Go was fucking nuts there. Uh, we live in... Somewhere on the West Coast. And, uh, Portland? Yeah, Portland, Oregon. Uh, <laughs> keeping it weird, of course. Uh, like, from my house, which is in, like, southeast Beaverton, which is an outskirt of Portland, Oregon, uh, there's, like, within a mile, maybe 15 or 20 stops in gyms combined in Pokemon Go. From my hotel room in Tokyo, uh, there were literally... Four stops in one gym that I could get from my hotel room. And if I went a mile out in that area where I was staying, there were easily over a hundred stops and gyms together. Oh, shit. Yeah, it, it, it's a very different game out there. I mean, you were saying that during, like, raid battles, there were, like, easily over a hundred people, right? Yeah. So I went uh, right before the Entei Day, uh, which was, like, two weeks ago, basically. I Sometime in early At July. Raikou was two weeks ago. I think Entei was more recent than that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an armored fucking... Armored Mewtwo is going right now. Armored Mewtwo but... is there. I got a couple of those while I was there. What? Dude, he looks so fucking badass. He looks garbage. 
the really? old armored Mewtwo from he's the original. Too, he's over designed. Yeah, I, I think he's way over designed. I would have preferred the original armored Mewtwo from what? like the Pokemon movie, the first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, oh, a, that's see, a dope. That's did, a dope one. You've never seen Pokemon the first movie? I don't. I don't believe I have. We should it's watch the one it. where mm-hmm. Ash turns to stone and all that. You don't remember? I didn't all, know they copied all, Star Wars. All the Pokemon cry <laughs> and like he revived. It's it's an amazing movie. It's the first ever time we see Mewtwo in America. Uh, as oh really? As I, yeah. Like you don't even see him in the in the like it, he didn't show up in the like anything until that point. Yeah, really? this is this is 1999. Yeah. Damn. The, this movie's ashamed. old, but it's a phenomenal movie. Oh, you know what I remember? Uh, okay, aren't the cards like the original cards from the first gen, like the like when they first started printing them out in America? Aren't those worth? Like fifty. Oh yeah, like they're, oh, there they're worth a lot shit of money. Tons of money. I, I would... It's really funny. Um, you guys know the Pokemon Azumarill, right? Oh, yeah. So apparently, a lot of people used to think that that was a like a form of Pikachu oh, before it was released. It, it was, was like... Meryl, and they called it Pika Blue. Yeah, Pika Blue. That's what it was. Oh. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> I used to have hundreds of those cards. So I, yeah. I used to live in a uh, apartment over at Forest Grove it's called Sharonwood Manor, and um, no, no, let me let me finish my story, okay? Fucking this guy, uh, he's like, hey, I see you playing Pokemon all the time. How about I just give you these cards? I have hundreds of them. Hundred of original fucking Pokemon cards. What? Right? They weren't valuable at the time. He was yeah. like, fuck it. Oh I, I used to collect these. You can have them, kid. Dude, he had like garbage bags full of these things, right? And when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I would play them all the time. Except I'd leave them out and I'd go to school and they'd be all on the floor. And you know what my fucking piece of shit dad made me do mm. he made me throw them all away for leaving them out on the floor oh now see something similar kind of happened not to me. like this yeah uh, i want to go and strangle that fucker and beat him till he's <laughs> blue for making me do that anyway oh that's so much um, money dude I, I used to play a lot of magic the gathering um and i at one point when i was a kid uh well kid i was probably like 15 but uh what i had done is i had taken all probably three thousand cards that i owned Mm-hmm. And I sorted them by name and by color. It took me days to do this. And then I typed them all up and, and checked how much it was worth. Anyway, I can't even remember it now, but it was like a shit ton. And then I don't know what happened to it. Um, I think I sold off a couple of the cards and then like they were like, yeah, no, the rest of these are garbage. We're not going to take them. Oh and God. so I gave them all. Uh, I think I gave them to my sister and she gave them just away to somebody else I was uh, like, what the fuck speaking of magic the gathering we were in um like a department store in tokyo and in japan department stores like big 10 story 10 floor behemoths and we were in a uh department store and on like the eighth floor or whatever they had a magic the gathering selection and we found a original black lotus card english black lotus card it was worth three million. Oh yeah, yeah. no doubt holy that's no, like that's that like is 28... the most expensive card of all time for magic it was like yeah, twenty eight thousand like a... dollars and i've but... seen one in person it was boring. it was fucking ridiculous wait, wait, wait hang on that's the one where you play like one black and you just end the game right ah uh, fuck i don't know no it's uh, something like you up. get like a couple of free mana or something it, it, it is among the eight banned cards, that is for sure. Yeah, it was crazy, um, though. Because me and my professor, he was getting some Pokemon cards for his kids, or whatever. So and he wanted some specific cards, and uh, we found that selection. We were looking through it, and we were sound like, Well, holy shit, that one's worth like 30,000 yen. That one's worth 120,000 yen. And then we got to this card, and we were like, I was like, uh, hey man, look at this one. It's worth three million yen. We had to count the zeros. So, uh, it says here it adds three mana of any single color of your choice to your mana pool, and then is discarded. So it's not even that great of a card. It's just add three mana and then discard the card. Oh, um, that's what? <laughs> it's not that great. But dude, uh, I get cards like that all the fucking time in green decks. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know why that one's yeah, as popular as it is. It is. Uh, from what I understand, the original deck before it was owned by Wizards of the Coast, um, the first deck was just overpowered as shit mm-hmm. at the time. And now, like, I don't think a, an original deck could compare to anything from today, but the guy who made it was no game maker. He just made it because he wanted to. Yeah. I... Um, and it happened to get popular. But on the topic of cards, I only own three cards now, and they're Pokemon cards. Um, I got a Litten 
from McDonald's. I like it. Oh, yes. Um, I remember when we had that promotion. And I think it's like one of those fancy gloss ones. I don't know. I can't tell. It looks it's holographic. Like, yeah, holographic. That's what I was looking like for. It's like newer. Yeah, it's definitely newer. I mean, it's a Litten. It's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the Alolan decks, I believe. Yeah, I oh, used, wow. I, I worked at so. McDonald's today. I actually just quit, uh, because I live far away now. Uh, and I remember doing the Pokemon promotion when we were doing Sun and Moon. You know, it had, like, all the starters, uh, Litten, Popplio, yeah, they, and Rowlet, and then they also had the Legendaries. Yeah, they, they uh, came with little, uh, <laughs> toys as well, like Solgaleo, uh, was one of the toys that I had, but I gave it to Noah. Yeah, right, like, it, came but, yeah car- but, it came with a card and a figurine. Okay. Plastic. So one of the other cards I have, um, also holographic, is Detective Pikachu. Yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and he has Coffee Break, uh, which is just healed as Pokemon. But I like the I like it that it's called a Coffee Break. And the only other one that I have, uh, another holographic, absolutely boring. I don't care for it. Is Morlol. I've never even Morlo. heard of this Pokemon. I, like, I think it's I, a Gen 6 Pokemon. I think it's a Gen 6, yeah, but it, it shows up in the movie for, like, half a frame. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when, but, isn't so, that when uh, the Bulbasaur leading, yeah. uh, whatever his name is? Yeah, so when, when I went to go see Detective Pikachu, they just give you a little pack, and it came with two cards in it. and You get Detective Pichu, Pikachu, I'm pretty sure that one's just a forced card, and then you get one random card. If, if it's not a force card, then I am fucking lucky that I got Detective Pikachu, and I'm pretty happy about that. That's yeah. pretty bitchin'. Yeah. When I was in that department store in Tokyo that I was talking about where I found the Black Lotus, um, they had, like, the full card set, Detective Pikachu. But it was, like, uh, it was like six or 7,000 yen, 60 or 70 dollars. I'm sure they uh, overpriced the shit out of it, because I guarantee those cards are not worth that much. But uh, Not yet, but if I hold on to this for long enough, yeah, I might. It might be like, pretty valuable I, later. I heard that movie was pretty shit. What, Detective Pikachu? No, it, it was, was amazing. It was a good movie. Okay, all right, so I saw the movie and I was like, oh, God, it looks fucking... Okay, like, you it, it, you know the Sonic movie? The Sonic the Hedgehog movie? <laughs> it reminded me of that. And I was what? Like, God, Why? No, no this, I think it's completely people, different. I think people bitched about that movie so much. Or Okay, I don't know I don't know the two truths here, but I've seen a... Um, I've seen... Either it was, like, some individual studio or the people who were bitched at long enough, the, the actual studio that's making the movie, I think they changed Sonic to actually what he looks like now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, was, oh, that, yeah. was that was that the actual studio or was that some fucking... So, as far as I know, it was the studio that was making Sonic was just like, oh, shit, we fucked up. And then they decided to take a year and redo the entire movie. What I think it was... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Th- th- this is just a, f- a theory here, but personally, I think it was all a PR stunt. You think so? I think it was 100% a PR stunt, because honestly, I had never heard of the Sonic movie until then. <laughs> I- and I don't think anybody else ever would have heard of it, I- unless that had happened, to be yeah. honest. Because who the fuck wants to watch a Sonic movie? I-, I was pretty convinced. Like, I wanted to see it for the meme, basically. Yeah, exactly. Wait, 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 who's it- playing uh, Dr. Robotnik? Jim Carrey. <laughs> Oh, really? God. I don't know how the fuck they got him, but they got Jim Carrey. Oh man. Uh, I, I wonder how pissed off Jim Carrey was when they when they're like, "Yeah, Jim Carrey, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put another year into this." So, well, he's not gonna have to re-record any lines or anything. They, it's only animation that's being redone. Oh wow! So it's all the people who spent those poor many fucking... grueling hours animating now have to do it again. Well, think of it this way: at least they get to keep their job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, um, well, now you need to stay here for another hour. I mean, uh, here, sorry. I, I would feel bad if it were, you know, something like, uh, like Baby Boss, where it's just like a stupid oh ass movie. Like, at least Sonic, you know, will get views, but like some, like Baby Boss. Boss like, Baby. Boss, Boss baby, baby, whatever. That is fucking so, movie. Oh, so God. stupid. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I kind of liked it a little bit. I like the, I like the, I like the lesson. Please tell me it was ironic, like. Well, I didn't expect to like it when I was going to go watch it. So then, it's not ironic. I got a couple laughs out of it. Would I watch it again? No. But I got a couple laughs out of it. It was funny. I feel like Anyhow, I feel like the... there was way too much baby ass in the movie. Like, I don't like want to see farts, that. I think. No, no, there was the, there were, like, several scenes where he's just walking around naked. It's like, dude, what the... Like, the last scene of the movie, he, like, full on, like, takes everything off and jumps into the baby sorter or whatever and ends oh. up back with the family. It's just like, I don't want to see this. Yeah. Uh, I guess that was just to appease, you know, appease the, the pedos. It's, it's like, this is close to legal cheese pizza. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so back to the Pokemon movie. That's yeah. kind of what it reminded me of. Is they yeah, just, no, it was it was infinitely better than Sonic. And, yeah, and no, I've only ever seen the ads for Sonic. Because so, for Sonic, it was animations for uh, 
how Detective Pikachu, it was actual, like, physical models that they created. Like, actual... Like, Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I thought that was all CGI. Anyhow, no, 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 the no. only reason why I would ever probably go see the movie is simply because Ryan Reynolds. I was like... It was amazing. Damn. I mean... Ryan Reynolds playing his little tiny Pikachu. It I was, gotta see this. It was hilarious. They should have gotten Danny DeVito, but... <laughs> nah, I don't know. I, I was definitely fine with Ryan Reynolds. It was um, a good performance. Detective Pikachu was definitely one of the... I wouldn't say it's the best movie I saw this year because I also saw Endgame. And that was pretty fucking good. That was pretty good. Um, I like that. But it, it was definitely one of the best Pokemon movies I've ever seen. Now, I, the only two that I consider being good are Detective Pikachu, and that's in second place. And then in first place is Pokemon the first movie from like 1999 or 1998 wow. with Mewtwo. Like, yeah. Have you all the other all ones them? are kind of shite. Well, um, all, the, all the other fucking... I mean, even the first se- season of like this first... Well, I hate Ash. I think he's a terrible person. He's just a shit character. I kind of hate the way they went with Pokemon. They just keep going for nostalgia, and it's just like, hey, your favorite Pokemon. Hey, your favorite gameplay. It's like, we're not going to do much to switch it up, maybe a few things. Black was actually my favorite version because they had that uh, Switch battle. Oh, like, yeah, yeah that shit was dope as fuck. And that was, it was only in Black, and I was like, you should have kept that The triple that battles, the right? Yeah, the, not, not yeah. the triple battles. They're like, bringing the triple ones. battles back. Triple battles are okay. It's nice to have more Pokemon out. Yeah. But the one I was talking about is you have three out at a time, but you have two options. You could have your Pokemon fight, or you could switch the Pokemon. Like, you could literally, like, yeah. ship the Pokemon. And it would make it to oh, where it's not like, oh, okay, oh, oh, now I, remember. I could do a devastating blow to him, or I could do a medium blow to, or to, like, I could do a neutral attack to all three of his kind of Pokemon. You know, it, it really kept you guessing. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it's like, well, he, I'm fire type right now, and he's got a water type out on that bench. He could easily just switch that water type out to attack me. So do I try to attack him, or do I try to... I think what happens, I forget how the transition goes. It's like, um, if it's your turn, you attack first, then the Pokemon switches, and then on th- their turn, they attack you next. So uh, you can't avoid being, ta- uh, being attacked back by the other person by the time you switch. Yeah. Anyhow, I... Uh, what I was hoping for in the Pokemon Ranger game that came up for the DS is Ooh, you'd, like actually, you'd actually get to fight alongside your Pokemon rather than draw fucking circles and prisms oh, and little God. boxes. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I thought I was going to get a cool, awesome, like, laser sword from fucking Tron and beat the shit out of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jesus. I never played any of the Ranger games, actually. Um, Don't. Don't play them. Okay. <laughs> they do mention the Rangers in Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, oh, yes, they do. That's right. I played through the entirety of Let's Go Pikachu uh, up until, like, the Elite Four, and I, I'm not going to, like, 100% it or anything, but if I if I wanted to, it was a lot easier to 100% than any other Pokemon game I've ever played. You know? Oh, yeah, it's much shorter. Oh. It's much shorter. Catching Pokemon is easier, especially since you can catch them in real life and send them to the game. Which is in cool. Yeah. It, it's cool. It's definitely... It, it's cool that it links to Pokemon Go. It's definitely more childlike, but I think, by far, the best part is that you can actually ride your Pokemon. I was riding around on a uh, uh, fucking Arcanine. Arcanine, and it was so fucking cool. You were able to ride Pokemon in uh, Gen 6 and Gen 7. Uh, I didn't play those. That was X and Y and Sun and Moon. Mm-hmm. You, you could ride your Pokemon, in, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, I, I think th- there was a little bit of that in Sun and Moon, but it, it wasn't like... I don't think you could ride like, ride, ride, ride like most Pokemon, you know, like... In this, like, any Pokemon that's large enough to be ridden, like, you can ride a Gyarados when you surf. You can ride uh, Arcanine across the land. You can fly Charizard up and over buildings, you know. It's, like, it's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, they did, uh, uh, of all the one things that they didn't accomplish on there, the one thing they did accomplish was, like, actually having different Pokemon out, rather than, like, you know, my favorite version is Sapphire. And when you go to Surf, it's literally just... Uh, that blue whale Pokemon. It's always going to be that blue whale. whale lord? Yeah. Well, fucking. it's not even that. It's like a. It's like a fake Pokemon. It's a, like it's you... like a silhouette, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, and it's been that way since the very beginning. Yeah, and and uh, I just I hate how the DS one, the, the the newer ones, they come out with newer shit, and it's still the same rewashed bullshit. And my roommates argued, why would you take that away? That's what people want. It's like, ugh, that's so no. boring, though. What I want is uh, more like a, like a full-on MMORPG where you get to choose your class because not everybody wants to be the best trainer in the land. Like, what about uh, like breeders? There are people, breeder. people who just like to breed in the game. That's all they do. They breed specific Pokemon with specific IVs and shit. Could so, you imagine if you could have that as a full game within another game, like where well, people are like, going through, like, 
uh, studying Pokemon. I would love to do that. Personally, uh, you know, like, if you separated the Pokédex, like, hunt from the uh, challenging the Elite Four, that'd be better. You just get more, you know, you get better Pokeballs and whatnot, and you get weaker Pokemon, but you can finish your Pokédex a lot easier, things like that. Right, think... right. <clears throat> no, no, I, I was just agreeing. Sorry. Oh, I thought you said wait, wait. No, I said right. Gotcha. Um, so it'd be really cool to get all these different classes, and and it'd be really amazing. And now, I, I am sort of taking this idea from uh, Sylph Radio Podcast, a Pokemon podcast that I listen to. Uh, and I'm actually going to be on that one in about two weeks or so. Wow, really? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I contacted uh, Nathan Kapazer. He's the host of that podcast. and It's a pretty big podcast. I definitely suggest listening to it. A lot of really entertaining shit goes on there. But one of the things that we're talking about is this Pokemon like MMORPG that they're trying to build. Uh, and I really, really want to play it. They're going to get DMCA'd. I, I thought there was already something like that where it's like it's open world and you can like interact with people. And... There, There's one called PokeMMO. And I've played it, and it's literally just you're in the, you see them walking around in the overworld, and you can battle them, and that's it. That's it's still dumb. just it's just fire red. That's it. <clears throat> I think you could get like ruby, sapphire, and emerald as well if you, but you still have to go and download the ROMs, and it's still you're just going through the regular game. Yeah. There's like there's nothing different about it. Yeah. Um, which was disappointing. So, and yeah. I, I at, okay, so when I saw the trailers and saw the stuff for Sword and Shield, I was like, oh, so. Different Pokemon can be captured at different times, different areas. So it makes it, it like trading. I want there to be a real reason to trade Pokemon. I want it to be like, well, you're locked in this region, or you have to have these certain requirements to actually attract these Pokemon. Otherwise, these these Pokemon are just going to run from you. You know, so that way, if other people actually take the time to go into like this progression tree, uh, they can capture these type of Pokemon and specialize in them and then trade like, hey, I have a grass type that's really strong, but I don't have enough fire type. So give me your fire type for this green type. So uh, another one, uh, another thing that they did really right in Pokemon Let's Go and it is coming to Sword and Shield, Pokemon in the Overworld. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's so damn cool. Have you seen that yet? No. no they it's... walk around in the grass and you can actually see them walking around. It's not random. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. it's so cool. I fucking love that shit. Yeah. One, you can avoid them. Two, you can just go after what you want. And uh, with Pokemon Let's Go, the way it works is like if you catch enough of the same Pokemon, you get a higher shiny chance. Oh, shit. You get a higher um, shiny chance and also get a higher chance to catch uh, like rare Pokemon. Like in the yeah. early game, like Chansey is a really rare Pokemon in Let's Go. Uh, but if you get like a catch combo, that's what it's called when you catch more of the same thing over and over. Uh, if you catch like 10 or 15 of them... And then you, like, use a lure or something. It's like, it'll show up that fast. Yeah. I mean, I, you'll have to walk around a bit, but it'll eventually come up. I, I was hunting for Pikachu candies because you <laughs> use that to, like, upgrade its stats instead of, I don't know, like, however they used to do it. I think it was just, like, potions of some kind. No, they, <laughs> use, know, they like, use, like, calcium. Yeah, and calcium and whatnot. Like but now that. it's candy, right? Uh, and so I went through and I tried to catch as many Pikachus. I, I think I caught, like, 45 Pikachus. Uh, just because, like, one after another, they start coming more often and more often. I was just hiding out in the Viridian Forest, but, uh... Now, one nice thing is, if you accidentally <laughs> run into a Pokemon and then run away from the battle, you're fine. It keeps your thing up. Your catch combo, uh, still goes on. Yeah. Wait, wait, hang on. Question. Yeah. If you were to kill a Pokemon, or knock them out or whatever, uh, that doesn't ruin your catch combo, right? There's no battling. Yeah, there's no battle. No random oh, yeah, battle. That's right, that's right. They, and, but I, but if you out. catch another Pokemon, it'll break your combo and do, start a new one for whatever you just caught. Okay. And I do believe Sword and Shield is going back to the traditional catching style. Good. I, I did like that. It's like, like, fuck, man, I needed to. Like, Pokemon Go is great and all, but it should stay in Pokemon Go. You know what I'd like to see in the actual Pokemon Go phone game? Mm. Fucking being able to trade in your candies for certain candies. I am tired of having, like... It's called a rare candy. Can you trade it in for rare candies? What? Like, tra no, no, Let's say you have a, a surplus of fucking... What are you doing? This Pokemon Go. Uh, okay, anyhow. Yeah. Let's say you have, like, a surplus of Rattata candies, right? Yeah. You, you're trying to level up, and you just catch him anyways, but then you transfer him because he's fucking god-awful. And so you have, like, 300 of these candies, and you're like, I'm not going to do anything with these, but what can I do with them? I just have an abundance of them. Gotcha. Why can't you trade in 100 for, like... You know, it's like you can trade in 100 for... A rare hey, candy. Yeah. And I wish rare candies didn't just give you one fucking candy. That's so bad. They should give you a amount of candy depending on the type of Pokemon, depending on the type of rarity. There should be like a rarity system. Like, you know, there's common, uncommon, rare, 
you know, super rare and legendary. Fuck yeah. shit like that. Te- technically, I, I, I don't think they go by that. It's like, there's normal, there's like, uh, faux legendary or you know like they're not really legendary pseudo legendary pseudo legendary thank you uh and then there's legendary and then in this game there's mythical which is like mew uh melton mewtwo things that you're not allowed to trade at all That's you can not... you can trade legendaries like entei and raikou but Sorry, birds. some animals going on that that's not birds i think that's a dog toy but doesn't matter uh they probably can't hear it um basically what uh yeah, how, how that would work is I could definitely see that. It would be really nice. Personally, I think it should be opposite from what you were saying. More for a mythical Pokemon and less for a normal Pokemon because it is it is impossible to get Mewtwo candy. Like, you have to catch Mewtwo, which is a level 5 tier raid, so you can't just go getting Mewtwo candy anytime well, you want. I mean, the only or way to walk do it, with it... Yeah, you can just walk him. Have him as a buddy. Walk yeah, but is it like 20, 20 kilometers, kilometers per candy? It's, yeah. yeah, it's really fucking painful. It's, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think rare candies are honestly fine at one candy per candy, but I I also I get enough of them that it doesn't bother me. If you do raids, you get like five hundred of them. Like it's insane. Not literally five hundred. It's just like if you do enough raids in a day, you get a shit ton of candy. Yeah, like I did a Lapras raid day, and I think I ended up getting like sixty five candy. Damn. Like, and yeah, I I get that it's you know RNG here, but like that's still a lot of fucking candy. You can do a lot with sixty five candy. You really can. You know, you can go to the strip club, get some hookers and blow. <laughs> Gotta get that Guard of War pussy. That's right. <laughs> I personally prefer Law Pony, but to each their own. Oh, actually, yeah. If, if Have you guys seen the... Uh, Guard of War makes black holes, okay? I, I see where you swing. <laughs> I prefer white holes, to be honest. Well, I, Whoa! I just need something a lot deeper, you know, it's huge. <laughs> Anyhow, uh... I, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> where were um, you? Where you forgot you? You lost your thought. So you said uh, before we started that you had some other topics that you wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, like why? Why do we strive for realism in video games? And even I fall victim to it because some people argue. Well, I want unre- I don't want super realistic things because it can get boring. Like things in like in the real world can really make a game boring. Like. Walking and running, like people who can run forever rather than, you know, you have a stamina bar. It, it, I think it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, absolutely. Um, I, but I think one of the main things is it really depends on the game. For example, the difference between Saints Row and GTA. Saints Row, they can do whatever the hell they want. You can beat people with dildos, you know, jump off a building and live, doesn't matter. And that's fine. I don't ask for realism from Saints Row. I want the crazy shit. But GTA used to be realistic, at least somewhat. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, you've got flying DeLoreans and motorbikes with RPGs on them, and it's just not what it once was. So I, I find it tough to go back to the game. I, When I think of Grand Theft Auto, I think realism, you know? Uh-huh. Um, Have you ever tried the GTA Online? There's some that, funny shit. That, that's can... what I'm talking about. Really? You can't get the DeLorean in single player. Oh, oh Okay. Yeah, uh, the GTA Online. I don't know. I mean, when I, when I think of games like that, I think of if it's a simulator and I did want to play real life, I'd have to play by the rules. They have these fucking admins that are constantly watching your back and telling you, you can't do this, you can't break rules, you can't play GTA. That's what it's telling you. And I'm like thinking, what the fuck? That's stupid. You know, mm. I, I think personally I want a little less realism in games. It, um because it can be a pain in the ass sometimes when it's like, okay, I think my favorite game currently right now is uh, fucking Escape from Tarkov, right? Hyper realistic f- fucking shooter. It, it's crazy, but like if it was as realistic as real life and you get shot, you're just done, and there's nothing you can do to bring your health back up. That's not necessarily realistic. There are people who eat. Like, there was a guy who got, like, 22 shots and lived. So it's like, you, you can still get shot and live. It's just a lot harder. That, that is true. Yeah. I think more we were talking about was, like, in uh, Call of Duty. If you get shot, like, in online, like, yeah, if you, you hide just behind heal a up. cover, you heal in, like, 10 right. seconds. Right, that's what you're talking about. That's yeah. what you were talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I, I think people want to escape reality. Uh, the only reason why I'd ever want realism in a video game is to be able to have a simulation, like... 
let's say I don't have enough friends, which I actually don't, who want to go out and play Airsoft every fucking day. Uh, dude, I'd love to. Dude, That'd hit be me fun. up, bro. Yeah, seriously. Like, we, we need to find more people who want to play Airsoft. I actually met a guy from at my work who, who I was friends with in middle school. Wasn't exactly friends with him. He was just a funny guy. Yeah. Anyhow, um... I play these games because I can't do that shit out in real life. But first of all, it oh. costs money every time. Yeah. You have to devote a lot of money into it. And the game is way cheaper, you know? Uh, so I guess that's the, the it's only... It's not as ca- cool, though. Huh? Not as cool, though. That, that is true. The, the difference between games is, like, uh, you don't have to worry about that realism, like, you know, having to buy all that shit. Uh, if you hit somebody and you piss them off or, or they're like, oh, nope, you didn't hit me. Now, then again, there are hackers, so maybe that, that will never end. That, that vicious cycle of assholes who ruin games will never end, no matter what you do. Now, um, what you're talking about here, uh, I actually saw a video recently of, um, it was like, I think Mr. Beast or whatever, some famous YouTuber, got like a hundred YouTubers, threw them into a... a oh, that Battle yes, Royale? That was, yeah. that was so Beast. fucking cool. And that was the shit, man. You know, what, you know what's even crazier about that? The first round was won by a whole bunch of animators. Like, oh, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the fucking sickest shit ever. Yeah. And, and they did it in a beautiful way because there's no way to, like, you had to hide your balloons. And so yeah. there was no way to say, like, no, he didn't hit me out of a hundred people. You had to keep... That's... Fucking genius. And I want to do that. I would love to get a hundred random ass people together, put balloons on and just start shooting them. That's now, right. There were some downsides with their game is that you can't see your own balloons very easily. That is so true. So it would have to be a little bit... Personally, I would rather have, like, balloons on your chest or something. Yeah, or hit markers. Something to show you've been hit on the body. Well, that's, you know, that's Isn't paintball. That why people do paintball wars or whatever? That's true. Balloons are a little bit less painful to be shot, you know? Um, I mean, yeah, you're not going to feel it in the balloon hole. Well, exactly. Like paintballs hurt like a bitch like they'll oh, leave just that welts. they're bigger too yeah fucking. they'll leave welts but if you're just doing generic airsoft and you have balloons on you you can still get the same concept of paintball without all the pain that's true because they call it paintball yeah they really put the pain in paint um, <laughs> <laughs> uh i used to actually do a bit of airsoft um back in middle school i had a friend named andy mm-hmm. and oh my god this one time I went airsofting with him, his dad, and some of his other friends, and because uh, his dad was definitely that guy who wanted to be his child's friend. Oh, God. Um, oh. I feel bad for him. He spent so much money on PlayStation Network just for Andy. Unfortunately. But, anyway, we're playing, and Andy's dad, uh, like, turns the corner and accidentally shoots me in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt so bad. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, that's not what it was. Uh, well, I mean, I did get shot in the dick at one point. No, no, what Andy's dad did was he shot me... And it, like, went inside my mask and ricocheted over my nose oh, 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 and back shit. out. So I turned around and shot him in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but I had this, like, red dotted line going across my face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's like you almost, wait, it's like fucking almost like a Native American war paint going across your goddamn face line. Yeah, it hurt. Uh, a lot, and so oh, I ended up just turning around, shooting hit in the dick. Uh, okay. I think my only problem with airsoft in Oregon is like there's only one court I know of that like we can actually get to without a car, and it is really tiny, yeah. super fucking tiny. The two things I, I dislike about airsofting or going out and airsofting is like I want a big open area. Well, so what? Uh, another time I went airsofting, uh, one of my buddies, his parents owned like several acres. Or whatever, so we just went out into a forest in his backyard, and it was amazing. Oh. It looked like Vietnam, as far as I've ever seen oh, the pictures. Damn. So there was like mud and all that, and so we were, so we were in the Civil Air Patrol. So us being the idiots that we were, dressed up in our Civil Air Patrol uniforms, so oh, that we looked god. like we're in the military. Yes! Oh my god, <laughs> dude, that's so cool! <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We we had um, those smoke grenades and shit. We had no, we did. It was what? amazing. Yeah, we had that's smoke grenades. Sick. Um, and, uh, so one of the guys there, uh, oh God, I can't remember his first name, but his last name was Sims and he had a, uh, uh, Barrett 50 pellet gun. Oh my oh, fuck. God. Uh, and it hurt like a bitch and you know how I know because, uh, he shot you. Well, yes, but I'm going to get to that point. So, oh, <laughs> um, we started playing capture the flag, but we didn't have any flags. So we decided to use his sister. As a hostage? As, well, I guess, yes. You could say that. But it was more like, we just called her a flag. Her and her friend. Um, and so I ended up finding them first. And so I just sat there hanging out with the flags for a little bit and having fun. And uh, I started making out with her. 
<laughs> his sister. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian, what the fuck is wrong with you? I, I was smooth. Uh, <laughs> Too smooth for me, bro. Anyway, at some capture point... the flag, not make out with the flag. <laughs> anyway, so at some point I stopped making out the flag, and I decided, you know, I should probably you know finish up this game because they can't seem to find us. So I pick her up, uh, you know, like bridal carry style. I'm just running up this hill, and it's got like a small cliff to the side, about mm, six to nine feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm running up the hill. He shoots me in the back of the knee. Oh! I trip. No! <laughs> sending her down the hill. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Was, was he on your team? Yeah. No. He was. <laughs> But apparently and he the, saw me making out with his sister. Oh, that must be why your knee's all fucked oh. up. <laughs> Probably. I just I remember um it it was like I was in a movie. I was going down so slowly, I was just like, no. <laughs> what did she wait, what did she say to you after that? Oh, I mean she wasn't happy. I, I don't that. think she would be happy. It's <laughs> like fucking A Sebastian. We we still made out after that, but oh, she did not contact player. me ever again. Damn, Sebastian. <laughs> you messed out, my friend. <laughs> I wasn't her. She had a boy's name. Um, God, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like um, Harrison. No, it was like Harrison. Or something. Started with an H. It was definitely odd for a female to have that name. Maybe, maybe she was. Her she, parents had higher expectations of her. I don't know. Maybe they wanted two boys. Or of him. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. No, Speaking never... of which, if she was a boy in disguise, would you would you regret your decision? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was not, though. She was not. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it was... Uh, I would love to get back into some airsoft. It was definitely a lot of fun. I definitely need more equipment. Like, I'm not going in without a mask or, or behind-the-knee guards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely like... Tacti- I want, like, a tactical rig. Absolutely. Shit like that for, like, holding my mags. Um, well, well I, fuck... I went to the... Sorry, when I went to the uh, airsoft thing in Portland, you know that one. Have you been there? No. Uh, Maddie or Preston and uh, Irene and I went on uh, Preston's birthday, uh, <clears throat> and we didn't have guns, so we just had these rentals. And I, I kind of hated how they worked. So like, you had to hold the mag up, like you had to hold your gun up in the air and then like flick this little uh, yeah fucking thing to actually load the bullets in, rather than like switching mags. I much prefer that. Uh, I think the thing, like, I, I wanted to get into paintball or airsoft, and I had to look at the two to get into, because the laser tag is cool, but it's, like, a different... It's lame. It's a different situation, like, like how they fucking play laser tag. And anyhow, um, so... Uh, I, I like the, the feedback that you get from, you know, bullets. Yeah, exactly. Anyhow, so with airsoft, I, I decided to go airsoft because there wasn't too many realistic-looking guns. Uh most and like even if they did have really slick looking guns the bullets are so fucking big they'd have like 10 20 20 rounds in them so you know shit what am i supposed to do i mean yeah they look nice and they'll fucking hurt but um i i guess airsoft is more of an immersion sort of feel where you're in an actual tactical you know situation whereas like uh fucking paintball is like a sportsman sort of thing like yeah. it's, it's a sport thing like they have these these uh, competitions and, and tournaments and everything. It's so definitely... they do that for for airsoft as well, just not as much. Yeah. Uh, and usually they're more militant looking, and they've got like, uh, like cheap buildings that they just threw up so that they could like uh, save hostages and shit, which sounds like a lot of fun. Oh yeah, hostage rescue that'd be so fun. Uh, cool. Personally, what I want to do is I want to go, uh, and I need a lot more money to do this, but let's just roll with infinite money here. I want to go buy, like, an old abandoned town. They're actually a lot cheaper than you'd think. They're maybe a hundred grand at most. Wow. Um, so buy an old abandoned town and then turn that into a, an airsoft arena. Like, oh, imagine, like, Call of Duty Nuketown, but oh, with pellet guns. Oh, dude. That'd be so damn cool. That would cool. be the fucking coolest shit ever. That'd be cool, but you're going to have to, you're going to pay all the squatters there and also pay the property well, tax the, the, the thing is is uh, again assuming infinite money here but it's also like out in the middle of nowhere it's difficult to get to oh okay. um and usually there are no squatters not just that i mean if it's yours you can start making a, a business out of it Letting exactly people go exactly. in and actually do that and you know what well, you being your friends we get to go for free of course <laughs> double double uh, <laughs> oh wow uh, not my friend anymore <laughs> um no it would be really cool to have one in a uh Funny enough, I actually almost bought an island one time when I was younger. 
which sounds a little ridiculous, but this was back when With cryptocurrency... With credit card, right? No. Actually, this was back when cryptocurrency was huge. Uh, so I got into Dogecoin just before it blew up. And at one point, it, it got huge, and I ended up having, like, $14 million US dollars worth of Dogecoin. What? Yeah. No. It was a lot. Uh, and I was about to buy uh, an island, actually, and uh, I was like, you know what? I should probably wait, think this through... And that was the worst decision I ever made because, like, the next day, it was worth nothing. The island or the, the money? The, the money. Oh, oh dude. heartbreaking. But, now, I, I did still get a lot out of Dogecoin. Like, my Steam library has, like, 170 games, and probably about half of that came from Dogecoin. I ordered pizzas constantly with Dogecoin, and it cost me nothing. Wait, does it just, like, automatically convert to American dollars? No, there, there were websites things? you could buy gift cards and things. Okay. Um... I'd prefer you didn't eat on, on Mike. I was just grabbing a slice. Not gonna eat it, I just wanted to tear it off. <laughs> um, anyway. I call it bullshit! <laughs> um, anyway, where where was I? Um, Buying an island, you made a bad yeah, decision. Yeah. yeah, I almost bought an island, and I think that would have been great. It was down in, like, the coast of Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and it, was, it had nothing on it. It was probably no bigger than a mile across, but... Damn, that would have that would have been so fucking cool. Do you imagine? That's yeah. like a fifteen year old owning an island. Like, That'd be pretty damn. sweet. You'd be pretty successful. Okay, would you ever LARP? I yes, know this absolutely. Is a change of topic. Like one of the things I definitely want to do. I mean, forget magic and shit. I mean, like, there's no way we can really implement that without it being imaginary. Gay. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> fucking, I want to take like swords and shit and like shields and beat the fuck out of people with foam weapons. I mean, that'd be so fucking so, cool. Um, we should do that sometime. We absolutely. Have you heard of boffers? Shit, I love it. What? Have you heard of boffers? Boffers? Like, yeah, the fucking, like, you get a... PVC, PVC and wrap them... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we could just do that and beat the shit out of each other with those. Fuck that sounds yeah, let's, fun. Let's, let's do, do that. that. We yeah. can go to, like, the dollar store right now and it's like ten bucks for all the materials we're gonna need. Yeah, we could just get those fucking brooms, take off the broom handles and... Alright guys, this is the end of the episode. We're gonna go beat the shit out of each other. Hey, you guys have a good one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.